fundamental principle of building secure systems is to never trust user-controlled input. Every data coming into your application that an attacker can fully or partially or maybe potentially control has to stand up to the utmost scrutiny. And one data source is often trusted even though it should not be, and that is the system time. So I was playing this awesome game Magikarp Jump, which is this cool Pokemon mobile game. But unfortunately, once you depleted all your actions, you have to wait for a while. A problem I have is, with anything I do, I always imagine how something could have been implemented and maybe even play around with it to see if my theories were right. Obviously, there are many different ways one could implement such timers. For example, when you launch a game, you load the current state of any action and when you want to do an action, a request is performed to the server asking to do something. And the server would respond with, yep, you can do that and here's your timeout. The UI will be locked until the time ran out. But even if you would do the same request again, trying to cheat, the server would say, nope, a timer is still running. So in this case, the concept of time for this game is located on the server. Whatever the client says, the server knows it better and that's what you want. But if you have to wait for every response from the server to see if you are allowed to do something, the game will feel slow and sluggish. And also, some games don't want to require always an online connection because that is annoying. So obviously to solve the speed issue, you could do asynchronous requests and have some logic in the game that predicts the outcome of the server so the UI can feel fast and in case there is a mismatch between what the game expected and what the server at some time responds, for example when the player tried to cheat, then the game backs out and says, nope, restart, gotta sync the state again. But sometimes requests fail and then the user would constantly see those out of sync errors and that's really annoying. So you can invest a lot of time in optimizing this to make the user experience good and keep any critical logic on the server. But you will quickly notice that it's not a trivial engineering task and, and you have to think of so many edge cases and how you want to handle them that your deadline or your laziness probably makes the decision on how you implement this for you. Not to mention that time zones and people who travel and all this crap makes programming with time really annoying. And the simplest solutions that will feel fast and thus good for games are the most cheater friendly implementations. You do any validation on the client. And once in a while, you push the current state to the server just to save it. So if the application crashes or is deleted, the user can simply restore the latest save from the server. A lot of this communication can be protected. You can use encryption and signing to prevent a man in the middle attack so a cheater can't easily modify the traffic to manipulate your safe game. And when running on a non-jailbroken phone, the user also doesn't have a lot of options to modify values in memory. Obviously this is a bit different on a desktop machine. But the bar to cheat becomes higher and if your game has no big monetary incentive for cheaters like selling valuable digital goods or accounts, you can be fine. But there's one data source everybody can easily control on the phone and is also trusted by these simple games and that is the time. So what happens in Magical Jump is you can simply forward your clock or date go back into the game and the timers all reset. You can again perform any action and suddenly cheating is super simple and didn't even require any intrusive actions that would be considered hacking. And this is true for so many mobile games. But it's not only a threat for games. Software licenses often have limited time periods they allow you to use it. Where's the time information coming from? Does the software require always online so you can query your own trusted signed timestamp from your server? Or do users complain about needing an internet connection to use your tool so you use the local system time? Here's an example. Look at the software some of you may know. JEB2 is an awesome Android decompiler. I love it. But it only works without an internet connection when you pay the higher price. And my speculation is that you are compensating or lowering the risk of piracy related to very easy license restriction bypasses this way. I don't really know, that's just my suspicion. But it's obvious that when you have an offline machine, how do you verify that something expired? How would the software know? 
the only source of time is a system time, which can be controlled by the user. So many demo version restrictions that run out after 30 days can be bypassed like this. But this goes even further. Where is the system time information even coming from? Why is the clock accurate? Why does it know the correct time when your PC didn't have power for a week? And I mean, you probably know that's what NTP, the network time protocol, is for. NTP is a network protocol for clock synchronization between computer systems over packet-switched variable latency data networks. In operation since before 1985, NTP is one of the oldest internet protocols in current use. And what do we think when we hear about old protocols? They are generally from a time where transport security was not really a concern. Let's read a short summary I found about this in a paper, Authenticated Network Time Synchronization. Early versions of NTP, so original NTP, NTP version 1 and version 2, had no standardized authentication method. NTP version 3 added an authentication method using pre-shared key for symmetric authentication, and the negotiation of keys and algorithms must be done out of band. Uh, that term comes from radio frequency band, so an out of band is an activity outside a defined telecommunication frequency band, because you suspect the enemy is eavesdropping on the one you use. And that's why NIST offers a secure time server and symmetric keys which are transported from server to client by postal mail. That sounds crazy, but of course, if you cannot trust your network, that's why you want crypto to protect your NTP packets, you can't send the keys over this same network. Upon a request, NIST will reply with a key number and a key value. The reply will be by US mail only unless the requesting organization or individual specifies that the reply by fax is acceptable. A reply by email will never be used. That's so interesting. Anyway, establishing a pre-shared symmetric key with billions of clients, PCs and other NTP synchronization devices seem impractical. That's why NTP version 4 introduced a public key authentication mechanism called AutoKey, which has not seen widespread adoption. And unfortunately, AutoKey uses a small 32-bit seed that can be easily brute forced to forge packets. A more recent proposal is the Network Time Security Protocol, NTS. And just as an example, when I look at my NTP packets on my Mac, I see there are no authentication or crypto fields used. You could run your own NTP server and deploy auto key or pre-shared authentication keys with your client, but then how does your server get the time? Is the server located in a trusted network? You see, it gets very complicated very fast. And this is a problem because think about SSL certificates. They generally have a time when they start to become valid and when they expire. And I mean, how do you determine that a SSL certificate expired? Where do you get the time from? Think about it. What if you get a hold of an old expired certificate and you want to perform a man-in-the-middle attack? The browser would still flag this connection as insecure because it expired, but what if the attacker now also controls NTP and changes the system time quietly so the browser starts to trust it again? Now the user doesn't modify the local time, but an attacker through a network protocol. But the good thing is, browsers are very aware of that, and for example Chrome has a trusted time source from Google, and they try to determine whether your system clock is off, and in that case refuse to do SSL until the time is in sync again. But other systems that are not as complicated as browsers, other protocols that use certificates, might not have this kind of logic. So overall it's a mess. Time is complicated, and a lot of issues can happen because of it. So if you develop an application that requires a sense of time, keep these things in mind. Have a general mistrust in the system's time and try to work around them to find other clever solutions that lower the risk of manipulated time information.